Sue Kim, the chairman of Bally's, joins me today. Uh, I'm, I'm excited to talk to you about this proposal that you have for Bally's. Talk to me a little bit about why you think a proposal to take over Bally's at $38 a share makes sense. Sure. A little concerned that currently all the operators are just spending too much money. They're just being too promotional. And it just, you know, that's going to create a bloodbath of earnings and then take a little time before the consolidation occurs and some of the weaker hands get uh, taken out. So um, I think that the industry, the gaming industry, uh, is getting hit by both of those trends. And we, as sort of a hybrid company that have both casino gaming and online gaming, are getting hit by both of those trends. So our stock is, you know, like yesterday, our stock was at $26. Uh, yeah, when I want to say close the year in the, I don't know, in the, in the, in the, in the mid high 30s or something. So, so we're down a lot. And, and so, um, you know, we actually last purchased shares around 37, 38, just in like November or December. So we've, you know, it's like we're a chef that likes to eat his, or our own cooking. So um, we are the large shareholder. We went out and bought shares just, you know, uh, within the last two months at the, at, at the price that now we're offering to buy the company at. Are you concerned that at these prices, Bally's becomes an attractive takeover target for an outside company? Well, it's an interesting question. Um, uh, obviously, we're, we're trying to buy more of the company and not sell the company. So um, um, from our perspective, Stan General's perspective, we are not a seller, we're a buyer. Um, look, the nature of these things are, are, that, uh, um, are that if we go and, and, and make an offer to purchase the rest of the shareholders, the shareholders then you know, can you know, form a, well, the, the board will form a special committee and the shareholders will have a vote, a majority of the minority vote to decide what they want to do. Obviously, in a situation like that, somebody else comes out of the woodworks and say, hey, I'm willing to pay more than Stan General, um, it is possible that effectively now we're in play. So, so um, I think that, look, it's a, you know, we don't want to sell, but it's a risk sort of worth taking. We want to buy and we disagree with the market. We're willing to put our money where our mouth is and, and we're excited for the business. We think, you know, and look, I'm not saying that Omicron isn't real and that there isn't an overly promotional environment in online gaming today, but we think we can get through all this. We just, so we're buying not because we think it's going to be worth more tomorrow. We're buying because we think we were offering to purchase, so we think it's going to be worth a lot more in the near future. So, Noel Hayden, the founder of GameSys, sure. you made this deal with, uh, with GameSys in October and closed the deal when the stock was at $66 a share. For Noel, who owns almost 10%, yes. what's in it for him at $38 well, yeah, a share? yeah, I think that's a good question. Look, I, I think that we hinted to it in our letter. I think it'll come out as part of the, the conversation with the special committee when it's formed and it's, it, 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 it wants to engage with us. But... Um, most likely we're going to have an option uh, for uh, investors who wish to stay in the company um, uh, to roll with us. So, look, I, I, don't, I don't, you know, in some ways I think I, I, I'm very much a, a fan of fairness, you know. So I'm doing this because I think it's right, you know. Uh, I think it's a great opportunity. I think the markets are wrong. And I think if other shareholders want to join us, um, and um, I, what, who am I to say that that's not, that's not right? So, look, I think you need to be an investor that says, hey, we, if we do this, we're going to be unlisted. Joining a, a very crowded competitive field where we know that the investment for customer acquisition has been intense. Insane, yes. I, and we, we tend to be hearing this. Maybe the shareholders are losing patience with seeing companies turn profitable, but take New York, for instance, yes. where you haven't entered yet. Yes. And the, the first movers, you have Caesars spending a ton of money on promotions and grabbing a lot of market share. Yes. Well, look, New York is a really interesting place because, uh, first of all, there's only nine licensees, and we're one of them. Um, and I think that, you know, the, some of the other markets have like 25, 30 different people. So I think people thought, well, maybe people will be a little more, uh, uh, a little more uh, reasonable about promotion and advertising in New York because of the fact that there are fewer hands. And it also has a 51% tax rate, which is the highest in the country. Um, this is great for New York, as a New York State citizen. I know it's great. It's like people, I mean, I mean, it's insane. I mean, it's, it's so, look, I don't, it, I think it's kind of funny. Like literally, I, you know, without casting aspersions at, on, on all of our fellow colleagues and in industry participants, but you could literally open an account with one person, 
open an account with another person, get your free promotional money, and bet separately, bet different ways on the same game, and you will win <laughs> on one of them. <laughs> like, I don't know why everyone's not doing that. I don't, we don't, you know what I mean? Like, and, you know, um, there's, I think, like five operators currently launched. Will be, you know, everyone will launch. We will launch sometime in April, I think is the is You're going to miss Super Bowl. Oh, yeah, we're okay with that. I think, I think that, look, we have a longer-term plan. I think part of this is why maybe our plan isn't fully being grasped by the public markets. Because the public markets tend to be very short-term oriented. What's going to happen in the next earnings? What's going to happen at the next, you know? And, but we think that actually the current version of sports betting is not a great business. It's a fine business, not a great business. I, we think that there'll be a wave of consolidation um, um, that will rationalize uh, promotions. And, and, but more importantly, I think what people will stop competing with just free money, but people will start competing with product. You told me in December you didn't consider yourself an activist investor. I don't. I'm an active investor. A conflict for you? You're looking out for the investment of your firm and you're well, the chairman of Bally? Yes. I mean, it, for the purposes of our bid, um, I am I am recusing myself, you know. So that's why the board forms a special committee, um, you know, hires its own advisors and lawyers, the special committee does, um, to engage with me from the perspective of Standard General. But look, you know, we also, you know, just happened to do, just because it's regularly scheduled, our, you know, we just approved our budgets for 20, 2022. Um, that's a board decision, and I am the chairman of the board. So, so as long as it doesn't relate, uh, as long as it doesn't relate to the matter of me bidding on the company, um, you know, everything is the same as it was. So I'm, yeah, so I'm, you know, I'm still the chairman of the board. That's great. Yeah. Thank you for taking time to explain Absolutely. all of this. Appreciate it. Absolutely.